Good evening and welcome to ATV News. My name is Shaloma Lawson. On today's bulletin, hyenas wreak havoc in Zimunya. The Toloto Highway is in a sorry state. Bembera Arts Ensemble takes traditional dance to new heights. Bulawayo boxers shine on the big stage. And a Zimbabwe wheelchair tennis player hopes to clinch gold at the Paralympics. Hyenas are terrorizing villages in Zimunya and preying on their livestock, with many people blaming the attacks on witchcraft. Our reporter Andrew Mambondiani gives us the story. Villagers in the Zimunya communal area are having sleepless nights due to stray hyenas which are attacking and killing their livestock. The worst affected villages include Chitora and Pudzi 1 and 2 resettlement areas in which more than 60 cattle and other small livestock have been lost to marauding hyenas. Farmers in Gutaurare and Chitora areas have also lost livestock to hyenas. So it matangata to din, to to chim magruti, hey, so so shupes. Villagers are now taking action to protect their livestock in the wake of marauding hyenas. Ah, it is easy. I probably would take to get the matter game ding. But the rikashi kaka richawi ni ngiri kacha kiri ba mai. Sharo chere ni tere kashi kete angare pasi no chere pasi pachoro diri kwa wichi tango to the bad. But other villagers think the solution to the marauding hyenas lies with traditional leaders. So, I should have a lot of people who are going to be able to get a lot of people who are going to be able to get a lot of people who are going to be Most rural areas in Zimbabwe, especially those close to game parks, often face problems of marauding lions and hyenas that attack their livestock. The attacks by wild animals have led to death and loss of livestock and crops. Reporting for ATV in Mutare, Zimbabwe. The neglect of the Toloto Bulawayo Highway has angered many people in the district and they are urging the government to repair damaged areas. Crispin Tabura reports. People in Choloto have urged the government to carry out maintenance work on the Vlawai Choloto Street Road patch as the road is full of potholes. The bad condition of the road is causing accidents and leading to a big breaking ride for motorists and commuters. ATV caught up with residents who are bitter over the failure by government to widen the single lane third road. The government has not constructed any new roads in Matibele land at all since 1980. And even the roads that are there now have been constructed by the previous uh, or the, the so-called colonial regime. So what do you expect? If roads have not been constructed for more than 30 years, you can expect the existing roads to have deteriorated. Transport operators also criticized the Ministry of Roads for taking too long to widen the road, which is only five kilometer long single carriage way just before one reaches Cholocho. Soon after independence, the volume of traffic has increased tremendously and the size of the road itself cannot hold that has to be rectified. The government must take this seriously. A flower based engineer said road construction was very costly and it was better to maintain the current roads than to build new ones. 
even this Choloche Road, it's, 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 it's on program. They'll, they'll construct it when the funds are there. But at the moment, the only thing they have to do, they have to maintain those strip roads. Efforts to get comment from the Minister of Roads were fruitless. Reporting for ATV, I'm Chris Ventabra in Cholocho, Zimbabwe. A traditional music dance group based in Mutare is gaining popularity in the city for its energetic and dazzling performances. Andrew Mambondiani gives us the story. Sakuba-based group Bembera Arts Ensemble has taken traditional music and dance to new heights. The group rose to fame after coming first at the Masakani Arts Festival in South Africa last year. Takabata rupa fads wata kumbure rwa tika wia takabata mukombe wedu ushu takaita number one ma best dancers mine ma countries akawanda taishi kaku ma forty ma countries tikaita number one tika pua shakare ni Maria taka pua ikoko. And this year the group won the Manikal and Chibuko Road to Fame competition, which was held in Chipinge. Ten groups are from Manikal and. Uh, contesting for first prize to represent the province in national competition. So Tiga we are took number one and now we are preparing for the national competition. We'll be representing Manikalit. The desire to preserve the country's traditional music heritage led to the formation of the group. We saw it is wise to converge and together and spend more time training each each other in traditional things so that we can preserve our culture uh, than to spend the whole day uh, in streets uh, drinking alcohol so that's, that's why we said no let us form a group uh, which will take the youth out from, of the, from the streets and preserve our culture and at the same time we are creating job uh, for, for the youth. The group has also diversified into making various traditional music instruments. Group Racho Shakari, at this point, it has become dense and cheap. Tiruku Gadzira Shakari Marimba, Ekuriza, Ne Hosho, Tisu Tino Gadzira, Ne Mate Hoacho Na Nunza Na Maswai, Tisu Shakari Trudi, Tiruku Gadzira. Though the group is enjoying support from people in Mutare, it is still facing various challenges. We are crippled financially. We are battling to find a person ano gona kuti assist ao in terms of financial yokuti tikuanise ku tenga ma materials tikuanise kuenda kuno kunema mo ma places again yokuti tivure a company di ioi. And given the huge talent base in the group, the Mbera Arts Ensemble is set to conquer the traditional dance scene not only in Zimbabwe but the whole region as well. Reporting for ATV in Mutare, Zimbabwe. Young Bulawayo boxers clinched gold medals at a major sporting event held recently in Bindura, about 78 kilometers north of Harare. Milodi Mukudu reports. It was a crowning moment for Bulawayo boxers who clinched medals at the just ended National Youth Games, which were held in Bindura, about 78 kilometers from the capital. Contestants from other provinces had no answers to a flurry of punches from the Bulawayo boxers who outclassed them and went to clinch gold. They were my first youth games, and I won the gold medal in the Pantam Weight Division. And they helped me improve even in my skills and I'm promising that next time I'll do even better. Foster Masiam Bumbi, who also scooped several medals in the past youth games, is optimistic about winning more accolades in forthcoming tournaments. I've gained more experience and now um, I'm looking forward to other tournaments which I'm going to face. The youthful boxers began their careers at a tender age and are also encouraging other youths to join the sport. I started doing boxing when I was 15 years old and I was trained by my father, Mr. Masiambumbi. I started boxing when I was nine and I was trained by my father, Petrus Masiambumbi. To all the youths out there, I encourage you to do boxing and it's not a difficult sport. It only needs you to be confident with yourself and only needs hard work. About 180 boxers participated at the Just Ended National Youth Games. 
Reporting for ATV in Bulawayo, Zimbabwe. A Zimbabwe wheelchair tennis player is confident that he will soon end the country's medal drought at the forthcoming London Paralympics. Robert Tafumane gives us more. Zimbabwe's number one wheelchair tennis player hopes to clinch a gold medal at the forthcoming London Paralympics. Speaking to ATV during training, the national tennis as says he's confident he won't return home empty-handed. Um, what I can promise is my best tennis. I know the level that I am at and the level up there is we're way behind. But uh, I'm not going to let that uh, pull me down. So I will play my best tennis. Nyasha bemoaned the lack of finance and support for the wheelchair tennis in the country. Like South Africa, they've invested in development the past five or so years. And it's only now that they are beginning to see the, the fruits of that. So we have a minimum of about seven people that are playing top class tennis. But that took so many years. With us, we don't have such a, a structure at the bottom. So we will, all, we will not have players coming in from a lower level up to the level that I am or even higher. So we firstly need to make sure we cater for those people that are down out there and then try and groom them up to the level that we need. His coach said Nyasha is a hard-working player with a great potential. Nyasha is, um, is one guy, you know, um, he's got a lot of talent, I tell you. He said spending more time in camp will help him gain confidence and prepare him for the tough competitions at the London Paralympics. Uh, he's, very, he's been working very hard, but uh, you know, with the resources and with the time that we had in camp, uh, you know, uh, we we not expecting much, but I know he's going to prove himself there. Nyasha was introduced to tennis in 2001 and started playing professionally in 2007, competing in more than 20 international tournaments such as the British Open, Nottingham Indoor and Club Foundation Junior Masters. He has no one to compete with locally and he had to relocate to South Africa where they have six tournaments on the international wheelchair tennis tours. To date, he has nine singles and seven doubles titles, and his favorite tennis player is Rafael Nadal and Uche tennis player Stefan Hude from Argentina. The 2012 London Paralympics starts on August 29 and ends on the 9th of September. Reporting for ATV, Robert of Money, Arare, Zimbabwe. Thank you for joining us. Good night.